I'm Corey Cutler. I'm the director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School in Boston. I've been working in stem cell transplantation for about 25 years, and my research focus is in the prevention and treatment of acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease. Chronic GVHD is an immune disorder that occurs after transplantation when uh, one donor donates stem cells to a recipient. The donor's immune system uh, then reacts against the host or the recipient tissues and tries to reject them. It's very much like an autoimmune disease, but in this case, instead of the patient's own immune system reacting against themselves, it's the donor's immune system reacting against the body that it finds itself in. So almost all patients who undergo allogeneic stem cell transplant are at risk for chronic graft versus host disease. We have ways of preventing both the acute and chronic versions, but despite that, a proportion of patients still get chronic GVHD. Chronic GVHD is very pleomorphic. It can affect just about any organ system. The most commonly affected organ systems are the mouth, the eyes, the skin, sometimes the liver, the lungs, or the GI tract, but just about any organ can actually be affected. Chronic GVHD presents in a manner that is generally recognizable to a stem cell transplant physician. As such, we generally do not need to do things like biopsies or sampling of tissues. We don't have blood-based biomarkers that help us with the diagnosis of chronic GVHD at this time. So for the most part, chronic GVHD is diagnosed clinically based on a typical set of signs and symptoms in the appropriate recipient at the right time following transplantation. There is a, a fairly standard algorithm for the management of chronic graft versus host disease. The rule of thumb is that if systemic therapy is required, steroids or corticosteroids such as prednisone are typically the first line therapy for this disease. That'll be effective in about half of the patients who are treated with steroids. And in the majority of patients who don't respond or who progress despite steroids, they'll require second or third line agents for the treatment of graft versus host disease. We're very fortunate now that we have two drugs that are FDA approved for the management of steroid refractory chronic GVHD and two additional agents now that are FDA approved in the third line for management of steroid resistant or steroid refractory chronic graft versus host disease. So axitilimab is a novel CSF1 receptor monoclonal antibody that's now FDA approved for the treatment of steroid resistant chronic GVHD in the third line. This drug has a very novel mechanism of action. The CSF1R receptor or CSF1 receptor is found on activated monocytes and macrophages. Previously, this is not a target that we have looked at in chronic graft versus host disease. So axitilimab really represents something very novel in the field and as such represents really a nice alternative approach to patients who have failed uh, more traditional therapeutics in chronic graft versus host disease. So the drug was approved on the basis of a randomized phase two trial in which three doses of axitilimab were tested in a large cohort of patients, overall 240 patients in the original clinical trial. And three doses of the drug were tested, 0 0.3 milligrams per kilo, one milligram per kilo, and three milligrams per kilo. In the lowest dose, or the 0 0.3 milligrams per kilo uh, intravenous dose given every two weeks, which was administered to 80 patients in the randomized phase two trial, the overall response rate was approximately 74%. And not only was it the most effective dose, it also was the safest dose and was associated with the lowest number of side effects. And for this reason, 
this is the dose that is now FDA approved for the treatment of steroid resistant chronic GVHD. Obviously, this is really important. The more arrows that we have in our quiver to treat patients with chronic GVHD, the better the outcomes are going to be. With four drugs, we now really have the chance to make a meaningful impact moving forward. Um, we look forward to new drugs being developed and just as importantly, we look forward to new ways of preventing chronic GVHD altogether so that drugs like this don't even need to be used in the advanced disease setting. The one thing I'd add is that there appears to be some very nice activity of axitilimab in the sclerotic or fibrotic organ manifestations of this disease. The drug was originally designed to work in those uh, advanced patients with fibrosis and sclerosis, and we are seeing nice responses in patients with those manifestations of the disease. Uh, in that respect, the drug is really holding true to its mechanism of action. That being said, it also works in the inflammatory manifestations of chronic GVHD, something that I think we as a field were a little bit less expecting to see, but are very pleased to also note.